media and everything we got going on, we can hide through filters, we can hide with laughter, but nobody will address the real deal what's going on. A lot of us was raised with not double parents in our household. Some of us wasn't raised rich, some of us was raised one parent, some of us have felonies. I have a I have a small record. So a lot of us have different situations. And what happened is when you had those situations, you use that shit as an excuse. Like, man, I got a fucking felony. I can't get no job. Nobody wanna hire me. Man, I ain't had no debt. I ain't have nobody to show me the way. And we use those as excuses. Now, a little bit about me. Like I said, I'm an author. I uh, published my first book in December. It took me eight years to do it. Some people would take months, some people would take a year. I didn't know what the hell I was doing, but I figured out a way to do it. Now, I became a flight attendant. I'm from Inkster, and my goal was to travel around the world, head on some women, travel, travel for free. So I wanted to become a flight attendant, but I never in my life seen a black straight flight attendant. I don't know if y'all ever seen one. <laughs> I, I didn't know it existed. So I'm going and I'm literally getting denied, 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 denied every time I'm trying to um, get, get applied, um, get hired. And I'm like, dude, I, I use that excuse. Man, I ain't never seen no black straight flight attendant. I probably got to be gay or something or whatever, whatever the situation is to get hired. And that's what happened with us. We will usually put whatever you got going on in your life as your excuse. Man, I'm probably not gonna get hired because I got a felony, because I had a kid before I 18. Man, if I ain't had these kids, man, I'd be, we always, we heard that one person. Man, if I ain't had these kids, I'll be doing X, Y, and Z. <laughs> so that's the first thing we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about your harsh reality and the different things you have to um, go through. Now, next thing right now, ways to make money ASAP. Shit, y'all heads popped up. <laughs> Yeah, Cause we talk, we talking about money. Like a lot of people gonna tell you philosophies. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mix in a little bit of my story, and then I'm gonna actually tell y'all tangible ways we can start making some money. Next, write down God-given skills. What are some God-given skills some people have? Speaking. Knowing how to fix stuff. Speaking, you got all right. So when I say God given skills, you got somebody like Le LeBron James. LeBron James, he didn't just acquire all those skills. Some you got to be born with. You born with him, six, eight, certain things like that. You are an amazing singer. Some people didn't learn. Some people, you, when you got God given skills, that is something that you know how to do that you really don't understand how it happened. Genetics. There you go. Your genetics. Some people have certain genetics. With certain things, wherever they draw, you know, we all know that one person that can just draw so damn good. That's the first thing. You have to first ask yourself, do you have any God-given skills? Because a lot of us think we don't have any type of skills. So if you have some God-given skills, you got to think about what they are and how you can flip those to make money. The second thing, what my brother just said, write down, learn skills. What skills have you learned throughout your life? Did your dad teach you how to fix a car? Damn, you can make some, you can make a little bit of money. Did you learn how to write better than the average person? Did you learn how to be a barber? Did you learn how to cut some hair? There are certain skills that you have learned. I remember I was on a plane, I was talking to a flight attendant. She like, man, you always help people out, showing people how to make money. How can you help me? And I'm laughing because as I talk to somebody, I usually think of ways how, how can I help them out. The priest said, well, I was like, you Haitian, right? Like, yeah. I was like, how many, uh, I was like, you have any skills? The average person don't say, no, I don't have no skills. I said, how many languages did you speak? She's like, four. So I'm laughing, I'm like, you can be a, you can be a tutor. I say, I seen your Instagram. Don't you know how to do hair? Yeah, I'm kind of good at it. We have so many different skills you don't think of it. You just got to think of ways to flip it where you can make some damn money. All of us have skills. You just got to think of ways, how can I flip this to make some money? The game changer, the thing people really don't tell you is, you have a lot of people that know how to do a certain skill, but they don't know how to keep on bringing in business. We all seen a certain individual that know how to do some good, but it's like, man, social media following, not good or whatever it is. 
The kicker is when you're good at certain skills, it's word of mouth. If I go fix your, your alternator, whatever it is, instead of me saying, hey, make sure you share this on Facebook, let me just, the best thing you can do for me is tell somebody about me. Word of mouth. When the other day, because I also drive trucks, I'm also a truck driver. We're going to get into that. One of my friends, two days ago, she needed to stay in Houston. She was like, hey, you know, I'm going to be stuck in Houston, trying to fly back to Detroit. What do I need to do? She's like, you usually know people. I'm like, hey, I actually have somebody you can go stay with for $30. You got cash, they pick you up from the airport and drop you off. She called me the next morning. She's like, how the hell do you know this person? So it's a black brother, him and his wife. He had on his crib like a trailer literally like some trailer homes and it got about six different rooms inside of it. So he rented out to flight attendants, pilots, people that's in the airlines, so they get to stay there for $30 a night. She was like, I never heard of it. I was like, because it don't exist. He don't have no website. He don't have it on Facebook. It's a 100% word of mouth. And she was like, bro, I was the last person that was literally sold out. So how the hell can you literally not be on social media, not be on Facebook, but still have your shit sold out. Because I know if you, if you was on social media yesterday, did y'all see Facebook and Instagram went down? It completely shut down yesterday for, for probably about 10 hours. And people was freaking out like, oh shit, it's, what's going on? So you need to be able to have your business or your hustle <clears throat> based outside of social media, based on your skills, based on that word of mouth and that effort. Now, now write down hustle. Say you don't have no guiding skills. Say you didn't learn any skills from your family throughout your life. Most of us is from Detroit or this area from Michigan, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't travel around the world. I didn't been to Brazil. I didn't been to Cali. I didn't been every damn state, literally, between driving or flying. The difference between people out here, we got a different fucking hustle with us that everybody else don't have. Like literally, don't matter be black, white, whatever it is, you we have a different type of fucking hustle with us. You gotta know how to use that to your advantage. The best way I personally use it to my advantage, write down network marketing. The network marketing? Network marketing. When I was 19, I got involved with network marketing. My guy brother came home and be like, yo, it's this company, I need you to sign up. Selling these memberships, I need you to help me to get to the next level. My guy brother and I had money at the time, I'm like, all right, how much it is? Take my card, sign me up. So he signed me up. I didn't do nothing the first month. But he had people come over to the crib, pop in a DVD, people would sign up. How was this? So after about a month of doing it, I'm like, bro, how much money did you make? Shit, I just made $500. Like $500. So I'm like, let me actually, let me watch the DVD. The company was called Legal Shield. The base was you sell legal memberships to individuals. The memberships was about $36 where you basically get to get affordable attorneys, whatever it is for any legal situation you can be in. Being raised out here, we know the, the, the assistance of having an attorney actually help you out on a lot of issues. So when I seen the membership, that was like, if you sell this $36 membership, if you're on this level, you can make $100 a membership. At the time I was working for Comcast and I was working at the airport. If I needed to make $1,000, I knew if I was making $200 a week, I got what the family's making. But they just showed me I can make $100 every time I sell these. I'm like, shit, I can get rid of 10 of these just off, off my hustle and the people I know or whatever it is. My first three weeks, I made $1,200. By my third month, I quit both my jobs. Because the thing I loved about the company, they didn't give a damn if I had a felony. As long as it wasn't like no money lines or stuff. They didn't care if I was black. They didn't care what situation I had. And I went to one of their conventions. They're like, man, you gotta go to the convention, you gotta go to the convention. And I go there and they had a thing called Profiles of Success. And this book, now this is in 2012. Right now, it's about this big. Profiles of Success was everybody in here that's at least making six figures. So when you open this up, you got people in Michigan. I'm literally, look, I'm looking in the back. You say it show what type of field you're in. Golf, grocery, host, insurance, journal, 
military, massage therapist. I've seen people that look like me in here. I've seen one brother that was literally a mailman made over a million dollars in a company. So when I seen people that look like me making money, and especially when I went to the convention, I seen some country ass guy, barely could speak English, made over a hundred thousand last year. I say, if that fool can do it, I definitely can do it. So I always lead with network marketing because there's so many different network marketing hustles. So many different ones. You gotta find which one that, that work for you. Literally, do your research, find out which one that work, work best for you, and I advise you to be able to get into it. Now, you got it. One major thing with network marketing is, it usually costs to start. Since this is your business within a business, it's usually investment. Right now, we'll say leadership probably $100. I was watching a Breakfast Club interview the other day, and a presidential candidate, he was talking about about 70 to 80% of people is a check away from property. Well, they say literally we live check, check to check. So some people don't have $100 a year right now, and, that, and that's real life. So that was, that was my number one problem. People were like, hey man, I don't have it. When, somebody, when you don't have it, I want y'all to start using y'all damn minds. Just start using your mind. And the way I did it was, if anybody was serious and had a grind, I don't know if anybody ever sold, sold drugs before or know the hustle, literally turn into the drug game. If you want to sell something and you don't have no money, you don't have no product, what does the person usually do, to, do for you? Front. They front you. They literally front you. Yo, I don't have it, but I got the hustle. Yo, let me front you something, and you'll be able to pay me back that way. I literally switched it when it came to network marketing. You ain't had the money? I'm like, all right, well, show me that you can hustle. If I make $200 every time I sell this membership, I'm going to show you how to do it. Bring me to some clients that got the money, and I'll pay for you to get in. So it's not, no, it's, it's a million different ways. If it's $100 to get in, ask 10 people to borrow $10. It's simple, like literally, if you have that will and you had that hustle, if you came to me and took to real and told us to deal, like, yo, I'm trying to do something with my life, I couldn't find a job, this how much it is, yo, can I borrow 100 top, flip some stuff, make some money? I mean, borrow $10. People would do that for you. So network marketing was one way. And the next way is using your car. Right now, using your car. Everybody don't have reliable transportation. Some people do, some people don't, but that's our end goal, to have that reliable transportation so you can be able to get around. Now, write down Uber, UBR. Next, write down Lyft, L-Y-F-T. Then SHIP, S-H-I-P-T. Huh? SHIP, S-H-I-P-T. Write down Uber Eats. Write down Rodi, R-O-A-D-I-E, and then Instacart, I-N-S-T, Instacart. All right. Yep. So basically, if you have a car and have a license, and this generation in 2019, there is no excuse. If you got just a little bit of hustle, you can ask surreal. I literally fly on planes, I drive trucks, I speak. He had called. He called me last week. Like, where you at? Like, shit, I have to grocery store at Myers. Like, what you grocery shopping? I know I'm doing some shit. And he had laughed because literally, shit. What that is is, you literally they got a contract with Myers and Target, where you literally go and grocery shop with people. I ain't never been a big grocery shop. They have the list of all the damn groceries. They give you a car. I grocery shop. Do it, go drop it off to the people. Nice day, give you a good asset if you give good customer service. Rody, that is where you can deliver luggage or whatever it is from A to B. Like I got the notification on my phone today, they had at the airport, deliver some luggage to Farmington Hills, we'll pay you $20. There's so many different ways to make some money in 2019. So if you have a car, 
sign up for all those apps. All that shit is free. And if you're willing to hustle, then even my fiance, she just signed up for Lyft. She did $200 last week. Shit, I did $100 last week, just extra spare time. So there's ways to make money. It's different hustles. Now we're going to write down buy low and sell high. We talking stocks? Hell no, I ain't talking stocks. Oh, okay. <laughs> nope, that's going to take, I'm, I'm showing them how to make money right now. What is some stuff that you can buy low? Because I just showed y'all some ways to make a little bit of money. Clothes, cars. Come on. Clothes, car, cars. Candy. I bought candy yesterday. Come on. Oh, literally. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. You remember, remember in Inkster, Candyland? Yeah, Candyland. Remember the Candyland? It's so many things. So cars. Say you got a little bit of money. I did this before my, well, my own son. Um, me and my own boy, we went in. He's like, yo, let's go to the auction. That auction in Brownstown. This was back when I was 20. We went to the auction in Brownstown. We got uh, Explore Sport. It was by like 1999 Explore Sport. We got it for $600. And randomly, it was a stick shift. So, learn how to drive a stick that way. We ended up selling it for $1,400 after a month later. Buy low, sell high. When it come down, you just like, I want y'all to really start using your mind. When you really get broke, if you really broke, you start thinking of all type of shit. <laughs> that you can flip for real. Some of us have all type of shoes that we don't use. Clean them boys up, post them on eBay. You know, it's this one lady out, I seen an article. She just making like 10 grand a month on eBay. Selling stuff. My friend that I told you that, I, um, just had sent to Houston two days ago. She was out here, and cause she's from, she's from Atlanta. She was out here driving, um, driving, and she went to the Walmart and off 94, I think it was like Celine is, before you get to Ann Arbor, coming, coming this way. She like, Landon, you won't believe this, because she's one of, them, one of them chicks that's real big on deals and coupons and all that type of stuff. I never really been big on all that. She like, man, you won't believe what's going on. I, 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 I done bought all this stuff at Walmart. Like, man, what you bought? Because she was coming to stay at my house. Like, all right, man, what you bought? So she come over, she showed me this grilling package, like all the utensils, she was like, this regular $70, I got it on sale for eight. Like, shit. Then she showed me this grill, she got for 20, that go for 107. And she showed, she literally pulled up on her phone and showed me how much stuff was going on eBay. So she was like, look, I bought some of these to get in my family, the rest I'm posting on eBay and selling. I'm like, shit, you literally bought something from Walmart and you can sell? So, and now I want y'all to have that mindset, that buy low, sell high. I spoke at a school last Wednesday, Selena, it was um, it's a it's primarily Islamic school. I'm, t I'm talking to fourth graders. These fourth graders are intelligent as hell. So I was talking to them about money because they thought I was gonna talk some bull. I'm like, I teach kids how to make some damn money too. I told them, I'm like, yo, what about a lemonade stand? And my buy low, sell high example with them was a bike. I'm like, all right, let's say you go to a garage sale or whatever it is, you find a bike for $20. It needs its wheels fixed. It needs a new chain. All right, you go up the street. You go get that chain and all the stuff you need for another 20 I say, you Google right now, an average bike going for 60 to 100 You clean it up, how much you can sell it for? They're like, man, well, let's sell it for 70 Let's sell it for this. They was learning how to make profit earlier. The kids can learn how to do it. Just start using your minds on different stuff you can buy by um, sale. <clears throat> Last thing, write down what you already know. You have to use your life experience off of things you already know. Once you start making money, once you start thinking, once you start hustling, once you start flipping, you have to learn how to invest and make some real money. One real life is, um, situation with me is, since I'm a flight attendant, the way the flight attendant game works, when I get hired, I get based in Chicago. So to get based in Chicago, you don't have no idea where you're gonna stay, who you're gonna stay with, things. the pay start off bad. So they had things called crash pads. Crash pads is when somebody rent out a hotel or somebody buy an apartment and they fit a bunch of damn flight attendants in one area. And I'm like, shit. So I ended up getting a crash pad. I stayed in about three or four crash pads. As I stayed in them, I hated it because you, it's 10 different people. And I'm like, I can deal with about two or three. So I never really fully liked 
the situation, but I understood the concept. I'm like, dude, one day I'm gonna start a fucking crash pad, and and that, I pray that I'll be able to make some money doing it. Since I was already in the industry, years later, they opened up a base in um in Louisville, and I came to my brothers. I'm like, yo, here goes the opportunity. They opened up a crash pad in Louisville. I'm already in the game. I know the person that runs the base. How about we open up a crash pad? They're going to need some people. Are going to need a place to stay. And C4, he know. All right, let's do it. We opened up a crash pad over a year ago. I got, oh. <laughs> Ms. Ford, Ms. Terrell, Mr. Ford. So I opened up a crash pad over a year ago. I got over eight flight attendants paying me $275 a month. You know, I, we. 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 But that, <laughs> so you know, fucking I. Like, like I told you, we, we started some business together. But that was based on, he don't know anything about flight attendants. That was 100% my knowledge. I'm like, yo, this is a game I know about. We might can do this. Let me run it. Let me deal with the, deal with the flight attendants. Let's come up with this money. Let's do it. But they're going to get paid today. While I'm talking to y'all, I'll probably get two or three cash apps with people paying money. So you got to start thinking where you can make money even when you're not, when you're not working. Y'all notice this whole time, I didn't say shit about a job. No, no. I didn't say shit about a job because I, I, don't, I don't care about a job. Because the thing is, if I, if I came in and told y'all to go out here and go get a job, that leave y'all room for excuses. Man, I, man, I applied to 10 different places. They didn't hire me. Fuck putting the ball in their hand, put the ball in your hand. I put the ball in your hand about 10 different reasons of how you can hustle and make money. Yeah, you can have a job. Me, my thing is, my job is as a flight attendant. I use that for flight benefits. The money is crap, but I get to fly for free. My hustle is me driving trucks. I make the real money because I use the flight benefits to drive trucks and make the real fucking money. So if I lost my job yesterday, I would go make some more money elsewhere. My fiance, she a flight attendant, so I'm gonna still have flight benefits. But I planned on that that way. Literally, people are like, damn, are you lucky? Fuck no, I completely <laughs> planned out, completely planned it that way. So once you literally plan it out and use all the stuff you already know, because some of y'all that know something about construction, some of y'all know something about books. My first book, my first book, Against all odds. It's a memoir. It's my process of becoming a flight attendant and all the adversity and stuff. Being raised in ink, so being raised in the hood, having a record. You got to go through a lot of stuff to be able to get to where I, where I became. My, my, my skills, I can speak. I'm good. I'm good with people. But I suck at, I suck at putting together a full, a full, you know, a full book, putting it in the right algorithm and having it sound right. So I went to one of my girls from high school. What's up? So you have you went to school? Hell no, I don't got no degree. I went to school. <laughs> I went to school for two weeks at Henry Ford. <laughs> like literally, so I don't y'all talking to somebody that don't have a degree, that have a record, I ain't making no damn excuses. I still find ways to make money. You got, and you got, you got high school diploma though, GD. Yeah, I got high school diploma. So yeah, I was like, when I went to high school, I literally, cause I, I did sports, I did football, wrestling, and track. So I was always in a sports team. So I did good enough so I could do sports. And once I became a senior, cause I was gonna go to Wayne State to become a me mechanical engineer. But once I became a senior and I started reading books from rich people, I'm like, I seen the road all my friends was going about to go to college. Most of us, when you're young, you don't know what the hell you want to do. I'm like, I think I can figure this out. I can figure this out on my own. So me and my guy, we actually started a clothing business where we literally found some people in China who was able to buy low and sell high. So that's how I get that hustle mentality. That's why I'm giving y'all no job stuff. And you gotta use the people that you know. Those networking, I was watching the Breakfast Club interview and it was a lady that, black lady that started her own business and she said the best thing for college for her, she's like, I don't know shit in college. She's like, I went to Ohio State. But the best thing was her network. She was like, the people I, my my husband, like my alumni end up investing a hundred thousand dollars into my business, knowing those right people. So if you didn't go to college, 
you got to start talking to people and building your network. you got to start communicating. Yo, who do you know? Who do? That's, that's, that's our wealth. When you didn't go to school, anybody, anybody in here got a degree? Two people in here got a degree. If so, that majority of us don't. So you got to start building those relationships with people you know. So that's how I was able to write this book for my girl I went to school with high school. She always, since we've been kids, she knew how to write better than the average person. I'm like, yo, I thought you if you wanted it, baby, dinner. help me edit this. Then when I wanted to be real professional, I'm like, all right, let me go to a professional editor and let me pay her to get it published. I didn't know how to do any of, any of all of that type of stuff. So now, and y'all do the last thing. Write down, write a book. How much does it cost to write a damn book? It's low investment, high return, it's free. It cost me zero dollars to write this. It took time and it took effort, but it took zero dollars to write it. If you don't know shit about editing everything I didn't know, it's gonna cost you from start to finish on the highest end, probably about two grand. That's literally the highest end. I did a hundred pre-sales, making ten dollars a book off the pre-sales before I even dropped it. Then on Amazon, I make seven dollars royalties. I got people I never met a damn in my damn life bad this book. That's how you want it. Have it. When we talking, somebody can bad a damn book. But you got to just start. You're like 100%. I, I always advise everybody to write a book because we have a, we all have a story. Whether you was raised poor, whether you was raised poverty, whether you, whatever your situation is, you can teach somebody else the shit you went through and you'll be able to help them. And that's why you'll better make some money. So that's all I wanted to um, talk to y'all about. So watch before pick just pick up the um, food. I want to kick it with y'all. We can talk different wealth principles. You can ask questions. We can talk some money, and I got y'all back.